everyone, and welcome to the Father Speak podcast here from Milk Like Mine. Uh, my name is Mark Williams, and I'm introducing uh, the one and only Mark himself. Uh, he's going to introduce himself. Let, t- tell us more about yourself, Mark. We will appreciate that. Mark, yeah, another Mark. Good name, good name. Uh, Mark Stevens with a PH. Uh, first time dad. I mean, it's a it's a blessing. I'm glad it's happened. It's just it's a learning experience. I'm glad to, that I get to do it. I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> People ask me a lot, like, what uh, what is it? How does it feel? How does it feel? I honestly don't know. It's just <laughs> take every day as I can. Okay. Um, now, so with this being your first time, have you ever thought about being a dad before? I have, in a way. It was a. Uh, <laughs> I was single for so long when I first, well, I don't know, for, I don't know, I've just been single for so long, but when I decided <laughs> to get back out into the, <laughs> into the dating sphere, uh, it just was a little overwhelming, so I was like, well, this might just never happen, but, <laughs> 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 but uh, when I met Zaria, she's just so great, I just, I don't know, I had thought for a while I, I wouldn't want to have kids, the world is this, that, and the third, but I... I don't know. She just seemed like the right one to to have him with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right? right? For me anyway, right? Everybody's got somebody. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. So you felt that way. Now, when you found out it was about to happen, what went through your mind? Ooh, well, uh, just because we both, well, mainly just because we both, like, have our own kind of battles that we were going through with, like, uh, mental health and then just other financial stuff i was like well this probably i mean definitely we want to have kids but is now like the time and it's like well it's i don't know it's the only thing that was really a hindrance was she had uh there was a surgery that she was wanting to get and obviously being pregnant was gonna put a (laughs) a big a big hold on that so uh doctor said she'd be healthy to do it so we were like okay Kid time. <laughs> okay. Kid time, let's do it. Um, and, yeah, other things just kind of fell in line, too. Like, financially, we got so much uh, that kids need. I didn't know, what are you, a changing table? What is that? I thought you just put them out on a, on a flat surface and get it done. <laughs> uh, you, do you need a whole table for that? But, no, nope, we got that. Bassinets, all sorts of... Um, I guess all the kids stuff, I think. I think. I kept thinking, I was like, wow, we got everything we need. And then we'd get something else. It's like, all right, we we have everything we need. And she's like, I don't know. We could get more stuff. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah most definitely. Now, one thing I did catch of what you just said, you was talking about mental health. Yeah. Now, how did that play a role into this? Well, with, and you, you, with me, yeah. Um, I had just started going back to therapy. I hadn't, like, I hadn't been at all throughout any of my life, but I moved here, and I was just by myself, and I got into, I got health insurance. (laughs) One of the benefits of that was therapy, so I was like, well, I guess I should do that. (laughs) So I started doing it, unpacking some stuff, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, and I don't know, just thinking about my own, uh, upbringing. I was like, well, there's certain stuff I definitely don't want to do. And there's certain things I can see in my own relationships, like uh, friendships, you know, and co-worker ships and stuff like that. <laughs> and I was like, ah, I don't know if now's the right time for me. But, you know, we go to our own, th- I go to therapy, she goes to therapy. We have a couple's therapy. And we just, we've just been doing better every day as far as communication, love growing stronger every day. Well, I do want to commend you for that, to be willing to take therapy because, you know, a lot of people do look at therapy as, oh, that's something that I don't really need. Yeah, you right. know, I've been getting by this whole time. Yeah, I'm still alive. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Even if you got one limb. Yeah, you know, no, I'm right? Going, you know, Everything so. can change. And, oh, and it seems like the blink of an eye. So it was just good to learn some coping skills and uh, just have somebody to talk to. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thanks for being able to share that with us this this afternoon. Now, since you went through that period of pregnancy with which with Zaria, right? Mm-hmm. What things did you, if you was able to tell yourself then, 
to what you know now, what would you have shared with yourself? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I have a tendency to blow whatever is happening right now just out of proportion and just, oh, man, I just hyper-focus on things. And I know this about myself, but just in the moment, there's some things I just can't stop myself about. But it's just like, dude, just you got your notebook. You know? It's just <laughs> certain things. We know we we know it's gonna be okay. Just <laughs> just chill out. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I don't. I mean, it's a Solomon baby. He's fine. Baby boy, he's fine and healthy and everything. But any time that she would get stressed out, I would stress her out. I just think, I'm not, oh, man, this could oh, this could this could hurt the baby. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't be stressing her out like this. I get. I gotta calm down. Uh, rethink. Just draw back. You know. Just take a second. Go outside. <laughs> just something. But um, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty easy going. So, so yeah, because I mean that's that's a journey in itself. Going through those months, I mean, what was the things that you caught that was changing? I mean, because you know, moves moves change happen on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and so what was the mood changes that you saw? How did you adapt as a as a soon to be dad? Or you getting ticked off like, you know what, I'm done with you, you know. Or how was you dealing with that? Yeah, no, it's um, communication. The, <laughs> the, my, one of my biggest, I guess, drawbacks with communication or failure to do so is the, when I just, you know, I, instead of sharing immediately, say if, like, something's out of order or, you know, to me it's out of order, you know what I'm saying? Just sharing that sort of a thing, just kind of letting it happen over and over and over again. And then it's like, ah, you keep doing it. And it's like, well, uh, from her perspective, it's like, I didn't even know I was doing something. What do you mean? You know what I'm saying? So that kind of uh, just, you know, hold up. I mean, just if this bothers you, say so now and just have a, you know, a chill conversation about it <laughs> instead of letting it stack up and just be something that stacks up and, then, you know, all the other stuff out in the world is also stacking up, and it's like, ah, one day, you know. But avoiding that is was my main goal, especially while she was pregnant, and then just definitely throughout the rest of our relationship, too, is just healthy communication up front. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, hmm, you know, the communication is vital, right? Because you could be thinking one way and she thinks something completely different. Exactly. Or you could be wanting to address it and then she like, you're offending me. I'm like, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm exactly. Just, I'm just trying to communicate. It's usually, <laughs> it's usually the tone. That's, another, yeah. that's usually the tone for yeah, me. Exactly. <laughs> so, now, how does that play into you being a new dad now? I mean, because you, you're looking at it, was it a month now? Yep, he's yeah, a, month. a month. So a what month have you took him from those months in the, to um, implement during this first month and going forward? Um, well, Zaria does most of the learning. And then I wait for her to tell me all the great information that she's learned. Cause, I mean, I'm there for all the classes and stuff, but I don't know. It's, there's some stuff that I feel like is just... Like, yeah, I mean, duh. <laughs> you know, but then it's like, well, I mean, I wouldn't have thought about that until somebody said it to me, you know? So there's stuff like that. Like, uh, just to be it's super simple, like holding up his head, you know, just supporting his head. Like, like duh, of course I would think that. But, <laughs> you know, that's not something that I thought or something that maybe I would have thought, like, immediately when I first saw him held my own child because I – I wasn't into holding other people's babies and babysitting and all that stuff growing <laughs> up. It's like, nah, I got, I got escapades to go on. What is this again? Okay. <laughs> but now that, yeah, holding my own my own son, first time holding a baby, I just, and I'm not the only one that does that too. I, had, you know, she sends me all sorts of TikToks throughout the throughout her pregnancy. It's like you're not the only one. <laughs> it's gonna be the first time holding his, holding a holding a baby and stuff like that. So, just. Uh, but yeah, no, just uh, simple stuff. Being learning that kind of stuff, and mm, I don't know. You know, I do have a question. You know, because what did you appreciate? Because you did have a doula in yeah. regards to this whole thing. What did you appreciate and learn, and or from from having a doula in regards to having your first child? Oh well, definitely. Uh, 
all of the things as far as what Zarya is going through, uh, like hormonally and then internally changes and stuff like that. And just what I could do, because I'm obviously, I can't like reach into her body and make her bones feel better, you know, but there's external things that I could like, I can do hip, hip squeezes. I can do massages, you know, and then there's always the getting snacks and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, and then all the other stuff that's easy. Uh, but then there's just stuff that invo- like anatomy and physiology that I don't know is going on. But that there's stuff that I learned that I can do to alleviate, to alleviate her suffering <laughs> in the moment. Uh, labor of love that she's going through. Um, and plus that sympathy session was cool. <laughs> yeah, speaking about that empathy session. Empathy. I mean, it's all right, all right. Uh, because I was thinking about that. You were a part of that empathy session. Mm-hmm. And... Just in case, if you don't understand what the empathy session is, is that the the father is going to be strapped up like he is having a baby, yep. and Weeps. he's going to go through the whole process of basically kneeling down and picking up stuff and so forth, but also getting electrocuted at the same time. Yeah, and then going through the process <laughs> of possibly of having a baby. So, right. Um, what did you take away from that? Labor simulation. That was cool. <laughs> hey, I like simulations. I play games. But uh, the, <laughs> the um, in particular, uh, one thing I remember at the end of my experience that Rikisha shared with, with uh, Zari and I was that most wives are delighting in their husband's, uh, I guess, pain. <laughs> but Zari was, was on the verge of tears. I, I didn't even realize it because of the... Uh, <laughs> The, the pain I was going through during the time, I didn't even realize that she was feeling so bad and also empathizing. I don't know. It was, it was a re. So bad. A re <laughs> hey, hey, hey. She, from what she told me, she uh, felt so bad. And I was like, anytime I've seen people, because I've seen videos before, anytime I've seen guys with this on, their wives are just delighting. In. <laughs> it's like, yeah, now bend down again. Pick up, pick up those keys again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that empathy session does help us to appreciate moms that go through that. Absolutely. Like, it ain't I mean, it ain't as easy as what we think it is. Like we still can go down and tie our shoes and that's yeah, why right? you no. wonder well why are they wearing crocs in the winter? <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, come on. Like, hey, I never like, I never critique footwear. Yeah. Be, be comfy at all times. Yeah. That's what I would tell her. I was just like, hey, just put on what's easy. I don't know. Yeah. It's so, still safe. Yeah, that, that was really good. That was really good. Now What's what's fast forward? Because now, you you you're in this first month. We remember we was talking about about uh, mental health. How you you know? Have you noticed that you have possibly dealt with postpartum depression? Um. Well, me myself, I. Uh, yeah, there's just like particular nights that you just that I'm just uh, tired, you know, weary. <laughs> up all night. I didn't obviously didn't sleep all day, and now I'm taking the the first shift, as it were, <laughs> with the with the baby boy. The um, I don't know. It's just a couple nights. It it was pretty tough. Just, uh, but I just remember the just to you know just to set him down. <laughs> you know, just go out and breathe because it it gets uh, it just gets hot. I don't know, us guys, we get hot under the collar. I'm like, oh, if I feel that, it's like, oh, all right, just let me, I need to calm down for a second, apparently, because it's just getting woken up by crying. I've never experienced that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then it's like, whenever I do get disturbed like that, it's immediately I want to fix the problem, you know? So I I can't do that. You can't do that with a baby. <laughs> and I've never dealt with that before. So I was like, oh, this is so frustrating. I just, you know, and I know everybody goes, I don't know. I They always say everybody goes through that, so I'm just there. Hey, I, I take solace in that, that everybody's doing this together on the planet. <laughs> hey, I got I got a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old. I'm still doing a little piece part of it. I know. <laughs> I'm still like, oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, man, I mean, but it, it is serious, man. I mean, yeah. it's just, you, you think about it. Like, majority of the time you've been with Zaria, there was no kid. Right. Now, your kid is in the picture now. It throws you guys' whole routine off. <laughs> oh, yeah. I talked about a routine. That <laughs> yeah. was... Like, what routine do you have now? You got to basically make an adjustment yeah. from where it was, uh, from where it used to be. Now, my question is to you. Did you do any, like, like any research in regards to, 
you know, raising a kid or did you like, okay, what should I do between the first nine months? You know, what? Um, no, <laughs> nothing on my own. You just dug just into the it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's how I address. Uh, that's how I just take every, do everything just about in life. That's how I've. Uh, so well, that's how I do. Well, I, there isn't much that I've done in life besides work. <laughs> so that's how I've done every single job I've had. So uh, I took it like that, and you know, I, Zaria was the main one that had all the resources as far as education and stuff like that. So if she's going to class, I'm going to class. So whatever classes that she's taking, I'm taking, and I'm going to learn something. I'm not just going to sit there with glazed eyes and just, you know, uh, you know I, I, take, I, I take my notes. <laughs> how do you think you doing all that stuff supported her? How do you make think that made her feel? Well, um, I do know, I, do, I tell her all the time, I'm uh, and we tell each other, you know, we're trying, we're trying. That's we, you know, we're always trying for each other, and just in life and everything. So, um, but I don't know. We built. I think I always appreciate it when she tells me she's trying. It <laughs> just with anything, if it's you know, just um, being a good mom, I always appreciate that. You know, she's trying that. I'm trying to be a good dad, and we're just trying to help each other and be there for each other as best we can. Now, you got what are you, you ever thought about goals that you have being a father this first year? What it, any any things that you already put in place like this is what I'm going to do as a dad? Well, in particular for being a dad and the family, um, I for uh, the past oh but okay last year has been a break. Just I had a really big life upset, so I just needed a break for. Quite a while. So, um, but before that, it was just workhorse every day, up, you know, up with the sun, go to sleep st with the moon. It, <laughs> it was weird in Alaska, but yeah, um, just work, 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 and that was it. But not really worrying about what the work, you know, how it made me feel. So, the main thing is finding out career wise what I need to do and what I can do that's actually going to. You know, make me happy and be an enjoyable job because we're a stress. I, <laughs> I thought it was making me go bald for a second. I was like, I knew it was just age catching up. But no, nah, that bald spot, I, I could tell it was getting bigger the longer I was working. <laughs> it's, it's like, what's going on here? But the, um, I don't know. That's that's the main thing. Everybody, um. I don't know. I don't know if everybody knows what they're doing out there as far as career wise, but I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. You know, and that's my main that's my main focus is getting back into either education or workhorse in somewhere. <laughs> it's a good goal to have. Good yeah, goal right. To have. Um, now, when you're speaking about dads, do you have any words of advice for them for the bunts that you went, what you have learned from pregnancy? all the way to where you are right now. you have any good advice? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, I don't know if everybody's taking things too seriously, but I do know that uh, every, and I think everybody could afford to chill out a little bit, <laughs> at least a little bit, about some things. Oh, I know what to say. I swear, Zaria is in, obviously she's got a pregnancy group, she's on the phone, stuff like that, throughout the whole thing. Um... There are dudes, there are men out there that are just be the most useless partners I have ever read a Facebook post about or something. It's just, I just, I don't know. I I am in a fortunate position to not have to work full time while Zari was pregnant. So I can't, I don't know the stress of having to get up and work and then come home, help your pregnant wife and then help with the newborn and then get up and work and doing that kind of a thing I can't imagine I at, at this point anyway but um I'm definitely a huge advocate for maternal and paternal leave because people need to be home together to uh, like grow and adapt and love each other without having like external stresses you know it, it's just man I don't know <laughs> cuz dudes Dudes need to help out a lot more as from yeah. what I'm hearing. <laughs> Men need to help out a lot more. 
Um, yeah. Cook my breakfast and lunch and dinner. Yeah, and no. Take care of the family and while I make that money. I, I get what you're saying. You, yeah, you no. Need to, need to support more right yeah just and even if you're not like like physically i don't know rubbing her feet or anything it's just definitely words of affirmation help there's that love languages book out there i know everybody can't read but or <laughs> not can't read but and i know everybody doesn't take the time to read books there's audio books or you can just get a little 15 15 minute synopsis on something or at least just figure out what the five love languages are um, because just hearing the title I mean you can figure out just especially if you're 20 something 30 years old 40 years old you can figure out you know what words mean so you hear words of affirmation yeah well as a love language you think okay you know I, I, I know what words mean that's what I can do for my wife you know, without reading a whole book you can understand that there's there's things that you can do just to be a better partner and to Help, like what? <laughs> Such weird stories of that Zarya just told me about um, men out here. Well, based off of what you know, what do you think? Just a standard. What do you think uh, a dad could do to help you? Hmm. With your experience and what you have observed, what what do you think? Um. Well, I don't know. I like to say I'm a terrible barometer for <laughs> for <laughs> what to do, but um, I don't know. That's a tough one. You, you, brought, you brought out one communication. I'm, stu I'm stumped. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Is, is a vital yeah, what man. do you what do you need? I just like to ask her that. Just even if it's annoying her, and she's like, "What do you need? Do you need anything?" Well, what yeah. about what about you know what's on your mind? Oh yeah, you know. Hey, you know, I, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to pick your brain to understand where you are at, so I can yeah. understand where you are at right now. Absolutely, that's a, that's definitely a good one. Yeah. The because uh, I know as men we are definitely uh, like labor creatures, right? We want to do things, work with our hands, and see results. But a lot of times it's something emotional, that, something that you can't necessarily see that you can change effect, or affect the change. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, yeah. I, I think I think too is that, you know, a, a lot of women just want to be heard, and it's not heard in the sense that they tell us and we try to fix it. Yeah, they just want to be heard. <laughs> yep, <laughs> they want to be heard to be like, okay, he's listening, he's appreciating what I'm saying. Yeah, rather than like for instance, oh yeah, the toilet, the toilet ain't working. <laughs> you know, let's say they told that to, told that to us. Instead of just listening to what she said, we would go in there and go fix the toilet. Oh, the toilet's fixed. Well, you didn't understand. I just wanted to talk to you about the, you know what I'm saying? Like, like the inner mechanisms of the toilet. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it's, just, it's just more of trying to, they just wanted, <laughs> wanted to hear. I get it, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, Yep, that's, that's been one of my biggest hurdles. Yeah. We always try to fix things, and then we're trying to fix it, and then, like, well, you didn't hear what I was saying. Like, what are you talking about? I did do but you didn't understand. Yeah, you heard, but you weren't listening. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah, so. <laughs> you know, because I, I noticed that women at times just want to feel not just understood, but to be appreciated. And that's one of the things that we could be thinking, like, oh, well, I'm trying to show you how to preach. I'm getting this money. I'm <laughs> buying you this, and I'm taking care of that. Yeah, but, look at all my acts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh, y'all ain't never complaining about food, but uh, I'm not talking about that. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's a, that's another reason too. We have the Father Speak group, uh, which we do have on every other Saturday. So next Saturday on the 17th, if you're able to come through a milk like mine at 5 p.m., come on through. That's next Saturday on the, yeah. on the 17th of February. And speaking of on that, yours, your your first one was last week. What you thought about that? Yeah, oh, good stuff. I just, I, uh, I need to hang out with people more, so <laughs> there's definitely a good opportunity to come out, meet some fathers, see what everybody else is going through. If anybody else has wisdom to impart upon me, I, li I just like to be a sponge and soak up as much. And just, uh, I know for most of my life I was just like a quiet observer, but I'm trying to be more active <laughs> and ask more questions and actively gather information, so. There's that. 
Um, and I was able to. I know I got, I got my notebook. I take notes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just try to write stuff down. Cause otherwise, I feel like I don't remember. So yeah. this helps. Yeah, so, you know, with that Father Speak group, we do have different different dads from different backgrounds that come. Uh, ones that are new, new uh, that are first-time dads, just like yeah. Mark. And then sometimes we have dads that have been dads for a long time, or they are not even dads yet. They're about to be dads. So they're just trying to get an understanding of things. Huh? And so uh, we do have those those meetings every other week, but for an hour, it's nothing. We're not having no... no uh, no long, long meetings or anything like that. We really just sitting there trying to get down to the meat of the subject and how we can be able to continue supporting our family. So uh, we appreciate everything that you brought to the table, Mark. And uh, you have any final words you want to impart? Mm, uh, oh, I'm trying to bring back cool beans. Yeah, I feel like it's coming back. <laughs> I'm hearing it more and more, especially at like uh, retail stores. So. Uh, but no, just <laughs> Julia tried to tell me, Julia told me to be cool as long as pop. <laughs> and I'm taking that to heart. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, we appreciate what you, what you, uh, brought in your interview and everything. And also, no, speak of that before we even close up, you want to give a shout out to Zaria, you know, say some th good things about her. Come and, on, man. Uh, uh, yeah, Zaria, <laughs> I love you forever. Uh, it's a Salomel is the best. Uh, my two Z's, um, I just look forward to us having the best family in Battle Creek and wherever else that we go. <laughs> so, Zaria, you know, uh, if you act up, you always can play that skit of this. So, just to remember. so Hold nah, me to account. <laughs> for real. <laughs> no, nah, but we appreciate everything, that you, this, this uh, interview today. And look forward to the next podcast for Father Speak. And thank you so much. Thank you for Peace. having me.